we are going to see and analyze a great game. This was played between Simish as white and Nimsowish as black in 1923. About Simish, he was a very strong master in this time, so he was very good. And about Nimsowish, I think he doesn't need to be introduced, one of the best in that moment. Also he wrote some revolutionary books like My System and The Practice of My System. Let's see the game. d4, Samish plays Queen Pawn, Knight f6, c4, e6. In this moment white plays Knight f3, but after Knight c3 we have this line Bishop b4. This is what we call Nimso Indian defense. Um, the name, of course, because of Nimsowish. So, probably avoiding something like that, white plays knight f3 and black plays b6, trying to get into Queen's Indian defense. g3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop e7, white plays knight c3, black castles, white castles and here d5 breaking and trying to control the center knight e5 a typical move here controlling this square and also clearing the line for the bishop and here Ninsawish plays this move c6 mm, it's a little passive we could say but also solid is protecting the central pawn the problem with this move is that it's blocking the bishop and the knight. That's the problem. But at least your central pawn will be very well protected. And here, Saimish took on d5. It's not very good. The best move here was e4. Breaking the center, fighting the black central pawn here. And it seems like white would be slightly better here. But as I said, he took, which is not very good, because now black can take with c, and they clear this square, so now they can develop the knight, and the bishop has some more space now. So this capture here was better for black than for white, actually. So c takes, c takes, bishop f4, developing, a6 controlling b5 and also preparing to take some space in the queen side. Rook c1 bringing the rook to the open file. b5 taking some space. Queen b3 connecting the rooks bringing the queen. Looking at the bishop here maybe thinking of something like a4 in some moment. And here in so which develops knight c6. Knight takes, bishop takes. Don't forget the bishop in the same line, in the same, uh, in the open file here, with the rook. There is nothing right now, but there could be something. So keep in mind something like this in your games. And here, white plays a3, and this is probably not a good move. White could play something like knight e4, trading some things because the bishop is hanging here, but keeping the control of the open file, which is fine. Uh, maybe instead of knight e4, a4 was another move here. But this move a3 is weakening the king side, is losing a tempo right now. So it's not actually a good move. And so which plays here queen d7, connecting the rooks. Uh, protecting the bishop, as I said, it was hanging there, and also looking at a3 in some point. White plays king h2, and here black plays this interesting move, knight h5. He's trying to get the bishop, which is good in this position, controlling the diagonal, but also after the the bishop moves back, black can play this move f5. Now black is controlling e4, so white won't be able to break. But also in some moments, black could play some f4, trying to open some lines. 
and creating some weaknesses in the king side. Here white plays queen d1. The idea is that now the queen is looking at the knight on h5, so probably they can play some e4 in some point, clearing the line and threatening the knight here. But now black has a very strong move. Some white piece is going to be very bad after the next move in Sowish plays. I'm talking about b4. After this, the knight has to go to b1, to b1 and the knight is really, really bad here in this square. So, Nisowish continues improving his pieces and he plays bishop b5, pinning here, so white cannot play e4 now. The rook goes to u1 because Simon still wants to play e4 pointing the, the the knight but now this move is not going to be so strong and Ninsowish knows that and that's why he's going to ignore this threat he just plays here this move improving the bishop the king is in this diagonal and also pointing g3 a good move for white here would have been a3 trying to get rid of this pawn so the knight may come back to the center but instead of that Simish plays here e4 he probably thought this cannot be bad I'm threatening the knight and also playing e5 but actually Ninsowish had already calculated this and he sacrificed a piece in this position the move he plays f takes the problem is that this pawn is now hanging here. So after queen takes knight, rook takes pawn. And what happens now? Does Ninsowish have compensation here for the piece down? I will say what I think. I think black has a lot of compensation here for the piece down. In first place they have two pawns, so it's not a whole piece. But also they have a rook on the seventh rank very strong and the king is in that line which is very dangerous black has a bishop in this diagonal the king is also there and is pointing g3 these pieces the rook and the bishop are very active for black besides white cannot play rook f1 to fight for the open file or to try to get rid of this rook in the seventh rank because of this bishop also very well placed here. This means that this rook is not only here right now, but it's going to be there a lot of moves. Plus, white has a knight on b1 which is very very bad. It's doing nothing right now. And finally, there is a black pawn on e4 taking a lot of space and binding white pieces. So, also this pawn on e4 is very dangerous and in some point it can advance it can be it can become a strong threat then so because of all those things i think black has a lot of compensation in this position Simish plays queen g5 now and in so wish just continues improving his pieces rook f8 white goes to h1 with the king black was threatening something like rook f3 here uh, for example let's see after a move like a3 black could play rook f3 threatening g3 here and after bishop f4 we have this move rook takes bishop pawn takes bishop takes and we get the queen here so probably because of those lines is that Simish plays king h1 here, but there is a problem with the queen now. The queen doesn't have too many squares to go, and that's why Ninsowish plays here rook f5. In the game, Simish plays queen e3, but after queen g4 or queen h4, why? I mean, black will have moves like bishop e2 or bishop e7, and the queen will be in trouble in that line so queen e3 and here in so wish 
wants to play rook e2 and capture the queen because it will be almost trapped but the queen may go to b3 in that line so that's why he plays here bishop d3 to block the queen and now he's really threatening rook e2 actually we need to say that this line of rook e2 queen b3 was very good for black because now Ninsowich could play bishop a4 and he will be capturing the queen anyway. White can try something like rook c8 to see if they can deflect the queen. But we don't have to get into that. We can just play rook f8, rook takes, bishop takes, and black is going to capture white queen. So this line was very good for Ninsowich, but the other line, bishop d3, is also fine. Now white plays rook e1 trying to avoid rook e2 and here Nimsowish plays this amazing move. Pause the video if you want to try to find it, it's probably the best move in the position but I'll tell you it's not that easy to find, it's a little surprising. The move he plays here is a6 and after this move Saimish resigned it here. But why did this happen? Why did Simic resign here after a move like h6? Well, let's analyze a little and let's try to find a move for white in this position. For example, white king should not go to h2 now because black can play rook f3, threatening the queen and threatening the pawn and probably winning the game. Actually, the queen doesn't have a place to go after that move. Also notice that h6 is controlling g5. So let's try to find another move. The rook cannot go here because they will lose a lot of material. The queen cannot move anywhere because everything is controlled around the queen. This rook cannot move out of this square because then black can play rook e2 taking white queen. And this bishop doesn't have to go a place to go, only to c1, but if the bishop goes to c1, the knight will be hanging here on b1. And the knight cannot move because there is not a, any square available. Um, well, we, we didn't mention the bishop, but it's the same. It doesn't have where to go. Maybe f1, but losing material. So all white can do here is to move some pawns. a3 or maybe b3. Or maybe some pawn here in the king side. But this is also weakening the king side and creating more problems for white. So the thing here is that white is in Suxuan right now. They can only move. Uh, they can only play a couple of moves with the pawns, and after some moves like a5, king a7, maybe, then white will stay out of moves and they will be destroying their position with bad moves so that's the explanation about this a6 now white is in Suxuan and whatever they play they will lose the game very soon and that's why Simish decided to resign in this position some things to highlight about this game in move number nine we had this position and here white traded on d5, black 2 with c pawn and after this black had some more space to develop his pieces. The idea here is that don't trade mechanically when you exchange things make sure that trade is going to be better for you than for your opponent. In move number 17 we had this position where in so wish had the possibility to make some white piece very bad. He played here before and then I had to go to b1 and it was out of play for the rest of the game. And finally in move number 20 we had this position where Ninso we sacrificed a piece. He took here on e4 as Siamish took the knight on h5 and then he took the pawn on f2. So he sacrificed the piece for two pawns but a lot of compensation. The rook and the bishop are very active 
and the knight on b1 is very passive. Those are some of the main compensations for black here. So don't be afraid to sacrifice in your games. If you get some interesting compensation, it could be fine. Of course, you can always win or lose, but it will be fine to do it. And in this video, I am doing something new. If you want that I analyze some of your games in another video, post it in the comments. I will pick one game from the comments and will be analyzing it in some next video. Always trying to give some tips, some way, ways to improve. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If it was like that, give me like. If you want more miniature and masters games, also give me like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you soon in another video.